today's church school lesson is all about the First Communion. And in it, we'll discover the importance of the Passover feast and learn how Jesus became the ultimate Passover lamb who was sacrificed for our salvation. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank and praise you for allowing us to be in your presence today. We ask your blessings upon this lesson and to all who have come to learn more of you. Help us, Holy Spirit, to rejoice and be glad in this day that you have made. Amen. Amen. Think about some events or activities that we celebrate all the time. You might think of birthdays, weddings, good grades and graduation, Christmas and Thanksgiving, and Easter. That's right, Easter. And soon it will be Easter. Easter is the time of year when we prepare to celebrate a very important time in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a time when he came to fulfill his mission on earth. And that was to sacrifice his life so that we might have eternal life, if we believe. Let's take a look at our memory verse for today. Today, our memory verse comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. It says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let's try that again. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now that word behold means to look at or to see. So when we say behold, we're saying look at the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So I'll say, what should we do? And you say, behold. And I'll say, who should we behold? And you say, the Lamb of God. And then I'll say, what does the Lamb of God do? And you'll say, takes away the sin. And then I'll say, from whom does he take away the sin? And you'll say, the world. Ready? Let's try it. What should we do? Who should we behold? That's right. What does the Lamb of God do? And from whom does he take away the sin? Good job, everybody. Let's try that one more time, just for the fun of it. What should we do? Who should we behold? What does the Lamb of God do? And for whom does he take away the sin? So behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's our memory verse for today, coming from the book of John chapter 1, verse 29. Say that over and over again as you practice it throughout the week. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Let's take a look at our scripture reading for today. If you grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of John. Chapter 13, verse 1 through 17. That's what we're looking at today. It's all about Jesus washes his disciples' feet. At this time of year, all over the world, Christians will celebrate the First Communion. And that's what our lesson's about today, the First Communion. And the First Communion is a feast, really, that honors the Last Supper of Jesus and his disciples. 
is the last supper before he completes his mission on earth. All right, hopefully you're at um, the book of John, chapter 13. And we'll take a look at verse one through 17. So at the Lord's Supper before the crucifixion, Jesus washed the apostles' feet to teach them humility. The book of John, chapter 13, verse 1 through 17. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. It was time for him to go to the Father. Jesus loved his disciples who were in the world. So he now showed them how much he really loved them. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already tempted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. He had told Judas to hand Jesus over to his enemies. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything under his power. He also knew he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal and took off his outer clothes. He wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that, he poured water into a large bowl. Then he began to wash his disciples' feet. He dried them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter. Lord, Peter said to him, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't realize now what I'm doing but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you can't share life with me. Lord, Simon Peter replied, then not just my feet, wash my hands and my head too. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs to wash only his feet. The rest of the body is clean and you are clean, but not all of you are. Jesus knew who was going to hand him over to his enemies, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When Jesus finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes, and then he returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord. You are right. That is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. So you also should wash one another's feet. I have given you an example, and you should do as I have done for you. What I'm about to tell you is true. A servant is not more important than his master, and a messenger is not more important than the one who sends him. Now you know these things, so you will be blessed if you do them. Can you imagine washing someone else's feet? You might think, I don't even want to wash my own feet, let alone somebody else's. But Jesus did that to show how important it was to serve others. Why do you think people had their feet washed in Jesus' time? Most roads were dirt roads, and people usually walked everywhere they went. When visitors came into a house, they, looked, they took off their sandals, and usually the lowest servant in the house was ordered to bring water and wash the guest's dusty feet. Jesus was showing us how to be humble when he took the job of washing his disciples' feet. So that's why he, that's why he was washing their feet. And who normally washed the feet of visitors? That's right, the lowest servant in the house. And then we know that he, Jesus did this as a lowly servant to show that no man is more important than the servant. So think of ways you can serve others. Start at home. Think of things that you can do to serve right at your own house, at school, or maybe at church. One easy way that you can serve others is to pick a good book that you like to read and share it 
with someone younger in your house, like a younger brother or sister or cousin, or even at church, you can read to some of the young church members and serve in that way. That's an easy way to learn how and start sharing and serving, right? Try it. Now let's take a look at the book of Matthew, chapter 26, starting at verse 17. It's all about the Lord's Supper, which, as we know, was the final meal that the Lord Jesus had with his disciples before it was time to him to go up on the cross. The book of Matthew, chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 17, the Lord's Supper. It was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The disciples came to Jesus. They asked, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover meal? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did what Jesus had told them to do. They prepared the Passover meal. When evening came, Jesus was at the table with the 12. While they were eating, he said, what I'm about to tell you is true. One of you will hand me over to my enemies. The disciples became very sad. One after the other, they began to say to him, it is not I, Lord, is it? Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will hand me over. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But how terrible it will be for the one who hands over the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Judas was the one who was going to hand him over. He said, it's not I, Rabbi is it? And Jesus answered, yes, it is you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He handed it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body. And then he took the cup. He gave thanks and handed it to them. He said, all of you drank from it. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Here is what I tell you. From now on, I won't eat wine with you again until the day I drink it with you in my father's kingdom. Then they began a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. That was the Lord's Supper. That was the last time he ate with his disciples. So here you see some sentences taken from Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 through 30, which I just read. And we'll see if we can figure out the answers to these questions. So the Passover that people celebrated in Jesus' time, what do you think that was? That's right. It was when the angel of death passed over the homes of the Israelites after they painted their doorposts with the blood from the lamb. And why was Jesus why do you think Jesus was referred to as the Lamb of God? Yes, his blood was shed so we may be saved from eternal death. And what represents the shedding of Jesus' blood in our communion service? The cup of juice or wine, that's right. And what does the broken bread represent in our communion service? Yep, it represents Jesus' body on the cross. And what do you think the meaning of communion is? What's communion all about? Mm -hmm. It serves to remind all Christians about the time Jesus had his last supper with his disciples and how he gave his life as a sacrifice for us, the sacrificial lamb. So let's look at these answers. The first one, I will keep the 
What do you think five is? Yep, you guessed it. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And then next, one of you shall, one of you shall betray me. Yes. And who was that person that betrayed Jesus? That's right. It was Judas. And next, take, eat. This is my, this is my, that's right, body. This is my body. And four, drink ye all of it. Drink ye all of it, for this is my three. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed. That's right, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And that's what we do in our church on the first Sunday of every month, we take communion and then we call it communion Sunday. And some of you may do it at different times of the month or year at your church. At our church, we, we serve communion on the first Sunday of every month. And these are the elements of communion, the cup, which holds the blood of Jesus and the bread, which reminds us of Jesus' body that was broken for us. So when Jesus met with his 12 apostles to celebrate Passover, and it was done once a year back in that, in that time, he shared with them the true meaning of the lamb's sacrifice. Jesus knew that his time had come and he knew that his own body would be crucified and his blood would be poured out for many. So everyone who believes in him can be saved. So whenever we take communion, remember these things. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we celebrate this holy time of year, please help us remember the great unselfish sacrifice that you made so long ago of giving your life up on the cross so that we could live and be free from sin. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And we pray for your guidance and your protection until we meet again. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone, and think of things that you can do to serve just like Jesus did when he washed his disciples' feet. See you next time, everybody.